It was a summer of nightmares. The Taliban back in charge, those living there desperate to get out. The UK government tried to evacuate Britons and Afghans who'd worked alongside them. It was chaos. Now, in a searing report from the Foreign Affairs Select Committee, the British evacuation has been judged as abysmal, which ultimately, it says, put lives at risk. The MPs were unambiguous in their criticism and said, the manner of the withdrawal of international forces from Afghanistan was a disaster, a betrayal of our allies and weakens the trust that helps to keep British people safe. The UK government failed effectively to shape or respond to Washington's decision to withdraw despite having had 18 months notice. There were systematic failures of intelligence, diplomacy, planning and preparation, which raised questions about the machinery of government. You know, when we were writing the report last week, I think in the committee we all felt sick that this was the report we had to write. It's the most scathing report I have seen in all my time as an MP. But I think we felt sick that we had to write it because it shouldn't have been like this and it needn't have been like this. Last summer, Newsnight discovered that mixed messages had been sent to some of those who were trying to get out of Afghanistan by the Foreign Office. Some were told to go to the Abbey Gate at Kabul airport where a threat was deemed to be imminent, while others were told to stay put. Today's report makes clear that there was, and I quote, a lack of clarity which led to confusion and false hope among Afghans who were desperate for rescue. It goes on to say, they and the many civil servants and soldiers working hard on the evacuation were utterly let down by failures of leadership in government. I think lives were, were lost to from, for people who found that they were disclosed to the Taliban, who took their revenge on them, and for those people who even now are being killed because we left them behind, we're not getting them out, and the Taliban are hunting them down. And as the general says, there are those left behind, like this man's brother who worked as a judge for the British in Kabul and remains there in hiding after the Taliban threatened to kill him. We've not named them to protect their safety. Your brother, how, how is he feeling at the moment? He's facing an imminent threat not only to him, but to his wife, his kids. Recently, a family member has been abducted and it's all because of the work he's done alongside the British government. If something were to happen to my brother, we would feel betrayed because I have tried everything. He feels heartbroken. We've seen messages he says have been sent to him and his brother by militants. Our people are hunting for you. We will find you very soon. And if captured, we will not spare your life. Your brother caused a lot of damage to us, so we will not spare his life and the lives of his family if we get them. We are searching for them. Today's report also states, most damning for the Foreign Office is the total absence of a plan for evacuating Afghans who supported the UK mission without being directly employed by the UK government, despite knowing 18 months before the collapse of Afghanistan that an evacuation might be necessary. Supporters of the government will say that this was an emergency, that the Taliban took over a lot more quickly than many had anticipated, which led to ministers having to juggle lots of different balls in very difficult circumstances. But that argument simply didn't wash with the MPs behind this report, making their conclusions far from positive. Ministers tell us staff worked tirelessly to evacuate over 15,000 people within a fortnight. This was the biggest UK mission of its kind in generations and followed months of intensive planning and collaboration between UK government departments. They say they're still working hard to get people out, having already helped more than 4,000 leave the country. 
since the end of the military evacuation. This report is scathing and piles on more pressure on number 10 at a time when another report, also expected to be scathing, is imminent.